Let's go and examine the differences in an Azure Function API between an in-process mode API and an isolated mode API. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to the channel. Here we are in Visual Studio Code, and what I've got open here is two APIs. One is uh, a new isolated API, which is on the right-hand side, and the other one is an existing in-process mode API. Both are C-sharp APIs. And I just wanted to go through some of the interesting points to highlight about the differences between the in-process mode and the isolated mode. So if we compare the project files of the two different types, we can see that by and large, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is that the output type of the isolated mode is a dedicated executable and that's because it's going to run in its own process, as we would hope with isolated mode. And some of the packages that we need to include to support that are now different. So whereas before we used .NET SDK functions, we now have worker packages that we need to include to make all this work. The rest of the project file is exactly identical. And if we go and look at the settings file, that we need to support our functions API. We can see that there's a slightly different functions worker runtime that's needed. So when we run this up in Azure, this would be the setting to indicate that we're running in isolated mode as opposed to in process mode. If we go and look at the actual functions themselves, we can see that there are some, some pretty fundamental differences. So straight away, you can see in the existing in process mode, um, the example jumps straight into an Azure function um, inside our class and just has a run method on that to actually run it. Whereas the isolated mode um, actually has a class constructor um, and takes the logger factory in. So this is starting to demonstrate that we get the benefits of dependency injection in the isolated mode versus it's actually passed in in the in-process mode. So it's showing that Azure Functions is, is transitioning towards um, code that we would expect um, with our existing .NET style applications using dependency injection. And if we go and actually compare the body of the function itself, we can see that we get some different types passed in. We get an HTTP request in the in-process, whereas we get an HTTP request data in the isolated and coming back out of the isolated as an HTTP response data and out of the in process is an I action result. So the existing functions conform much more to the way that MVC web API style functions would behave, whereas the isolated mode is now breaking away from that, it seems, and using a totally different set of kind of underlying objects that we have to use to make that work. And that, that brings in some, some challenges. So if we go and look at the response, we can see that in the, in the isolated mode, we have our very familiar OK object result that takes in our message body that we want to send back. And this OK object result sets things like the content type header on the response and also the HTTP status and also puts the message into the, the payload body of the response. Now, if we compare that to what's going on in the isolated mode, we have to actually create a response object ourselves, and we can only specify the actual status code against that. And then against that response object, we have to go and set the content type header ourselves and then write the body into that ourselves. So this has become a lot more long-winded now. Although it gives us more control over what we can and can't do, this is kind of confusing our code and making it more complex because we have to deal with the complexities of the transport rather than our function just focusing on the business logic itself. So this I, I see as a kind of step backwards, at least initially, I'm sure. Microsoft will address this as we move forwards, but this is definitely a step backwards from what we're used to today in Web API world and Azure Functions at least. And that's it for this video. If you want to see more content like this, then drop me a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.